is here and then or did I not put it in my crochet playlist chevron afghan of course I didn't put it in my playlist because that would have been a smart idea all right this guy this guy commands go to project All right, um, there you go. Exclamation point project. And then that would bring, that'll bring up the, um, the video that I've been following along with. Package Christmas, you got three packages today. Did you get anything exciting? It's a heavy topic, so it's a struggle. You gotta, you gotta take those breaks. You gotta take care of yourself. And you'll get through it. Need a bath dupe for that. Sitting in the dark in the bath with some ice cream. This was how I got through the dread. <laughs> Heated blanket. Dread. Dread buster dupe. All right. Let's try this again. Third, third time's a charm. One. Two. And then we skip one. So I skip this guy and then I go in here. And I'm pretty sure I counted that that should be correct. Pro controller, sock subscription, and your compression gloves. Heck yeah. Sock subscription. How often do you get socks and how many pairs do you usually get? What a fun, what a fun package day also. Like those are all things that are both fun and useful. Oh yeah, I, I also wanna know what Emma just asked. You have pliers arriving, marker pliers? Just black, that's the kind I have too. She subscribe on my sock till I'm warm. <laughs> that's so true trying to watch you and see what I'm doing. I'll, I'll explain it. So right now I'm just single crocheting. Also green eyed chick, do you like to be called anything else other than green eyed chick? So this is just single crochet, another single. And I'm just doing that up this row. This is going to be, we're making the first chevron. We're starting back over at the beginning to make our third row, or no, no, this is our second row of this color. We'll be doing four in total and then switching to another color. So I'm just crocheting along this row here. Sherry, nice to meet you, Sherry. Another single and another single and last single and now i have to count my stitches and pray that i have the right amount this time because if i don't i think i'm just going to pr pretend that i do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay perfect so now i just need to get a little bit more yarn off she get my yarn till i'm off and then so we're at the very peak of this chevron I know I have busy, busy colors on busy colors. <laughs> so we're at the very peak of this chevron and into this stitch, which is at the very, very tippy top, which you can tell it's at the top because of the little hole that's here. If you can see where my finger is poking through, we're going to do three single crochet into one stitch. And that is what's going to create the peak. So get that in there and let me just do one, two, and three. And now we're going to do 11 single crochet down the other side and, to, and once we hit 11, the next two stitches you skip and then into that next stitch that you will start working into, you do 11 more. And then once you do 11, 
you do three in at the top, do 11 more down, skip two, and you just repeat that for the entire pattern. Cut your cartilage piercing in half so you can get it out of your ear. Oh no. You got two pairs of Patagonia shorts off of eBay because you can't buy new clothes for yourself. Uh, also like Patagonia holds up though. Like you probably got a good deal. You saved the link. I'm glad. If you end up making something, I would, I would love, uh, I would love to hear about your progress. If you feel like keeping me updated. Also, I should probably do this when I get raids, huh? I have, um, social media <laughs> and a discord. If you're interested in getting to know me or the community better, no pressure to follow or join, but the options there, if you want it. Wailing to heaven right now. Do you guys want anything? Yeah. Can I get a Borger awesome socks club. Oh, that's very cool. Thank you for my socks. Hank green. <laughs> Let that fucker Gabriel know we have beef. Can you get me a Germa vampire blanket from Wailing to Heaven, please? When you start a line, do you loop over and then go through your stitch? Or do you go through your stitch and then loop over and pull through? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, also I'm crocheting in the back loops, by the way. So I go through and then I think yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through too. Does that answer your question, Panic? Tutorial pilled. Hi, I'm streaming. That's okay. You can say hi. Germa blanket meet and greet when? Come over here. Look who's here. Well, well, well. Look what Kit. Oh, wait, it's on my lap. <laughs> Look, what <Kit. laughs> Look what Kit got me. <laughs> Kit just brought that over. <laughs> Okay. Oh, sweetie, <laughs> sweetie Todd. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mike Wazowski, says Emma. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor, don't be home. <gasps> Poggers. And we have an air mattress now. Who's coming over? Who's coming over? We got an air mattress. Oh, you want to sleep on it? Okay, Kit says hi. They're both in here. Oh, they're right behind me, aren't they? <laughs> Gigi was showing hole on my stream again today. Classic. North wants to come over. Oh yeah. You gotta see my, my sauna shrine. Yeah, we got the, the sauna shrine. When the Discord invite, the Discord invite is invalid. Oh, crap. Okay, oh, gotta head out. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Mike. <laughs> he won't get off. He wants to. He's on there now. He's sitting. He's sitting. You're coming over, but only for the air mattress. Don't talk to me while I'm there. Okay. Um, he's fine for now. <laughs> he's fine for now. Yeah. Bye. That was my roommate, everybody. All right, this Discord link should work. I thought I made it so that it was not, it wouldn't be invalid, but guess I guess I didn't do that. Boneless pizza. She crotch in my back loop till I'm through. Is back loops the crochet version of back rooms? Yes. Okay, Vincent. You want to get out? Stay in a row, bud. What a shocker that my cat was in my room for two minutes and then wanted to leave. I, for one, am shocked. Showed hole and then... Yeah, exactly. All right. Wow. So many guest stars today. Me when I have people in my life that I love and care for. Mm -hmm. 
This is that damn Shiloh song again. It's following me. Okay. I, I'm going to be real. The app, the, the, the words be real. I really don't understand the appeal of people like music. That's like, <laughs> like, if I wanted to hear that, I would blow into the top of a glass bottle. You know what I'm saying? Don't have any of those. I have a herd of sheep that must be tended and guarded from wolves. Me when I'm a sheep. 2016 yawn core. That literally just made me yawn. <sighs> Speaking of music like that, I have a song I need to send. Okay, amazing. That the song that was just on earlier. Here, I'll I'll play it. Oh wait, that's the song we're listening to right now. This. <laughs> like that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> Guardian Angel. I don't know that one. I don't know that one. Three chords and him going owl mode. He's truly going owl mode. It's it's similar to like the cursive singing. Like yawn core and cursive singing are the same. Also, uh Astinet. Wait, am I saying that right? Anstinet. Thanks for that follow, by the way. I don't know if I said I don't know if I said that. If I did, then you got thanked twice. Get thanked twice. Excuse me. Cursive singing for boys, for the boys. Welcome to my kitchen. We have bananas and avocado. It's beer Monday. What do you have? What do I have? Water. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It makes you go feral every time you remember it. Well, we got to listen to it now. Yodeling Mozart? <laughs> Even though I may rue it, I have put the yodel to it. So without hesitation, I will throw in one or two. Okay. Yeah, that was good. I would I would listen to that over Yawncore for sure. For sure. This is that once in a All right, that's it. I when I said I want instrumental lo-fi, I mean it. Lo-fi instrumental. You better be you better be lo-fi instrumental. You better not be lo-fi instrumental when I get home. On beer Monday, I don't drink alcohol. That's slash SRS. I drink water. Rude. Three liters of water. Send that to my dad right now. Wait, Emma, can you post it in the music channel so Rue can see it? What did you just come back to? The best song in the world. Nope, Phoebe Bridgers. That's it, instrumentals your lo-fi. That made you lose your whole train of thought. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So there's fun Fridays, there's beer Mondays, out of touch Thursday, flat fuck Friday. Oh wait, flat fuck Friday. Flat Fuck Friday and Fun Fridays contradict. 
you listen to manipulator music at a party, but you listen to music made by women. Listen, you must understand. Sourdew, let me tell you something. It is not uncommon for men who listen to Phoebe Bridgers and Mitski at all to be, it's, it's sort of like, like cis, cis het, like straight or cis, cis het and straight, your cis het and your straight, cis het men who like have septum piercings and like listen to good music are either chill or horrid. There's really, there's not a lot in between. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference at first. So there's like, we have evolved an extra sense to be like, what's the dealio? You had your like songs on shuffle tearing down the motorway and that came on and for some reason I was unable to skip it and I lost my mind so bad I missed my exit. <laughs> Okay, true. Flat Fuck Friday does not have to be mutually exclusive. That's true. But I'm not straight. Well, see, there you go. Ex exempt. War flashbacks. And it, you know the reason why, and I can tell you exactly why. It's because there are certain, there are certain men who understand how to co-opt a tender aesthetic. And that is manipulative. Like there are certain men who like, regardless of, you know, whatever, they just, they know how to be a wolf in sheep's clothing, essentially, if that makes sense. But the sheep's clothing is Phoebe Bridgers and septum piercings. And that is the big red flag because genuine, genuine like tenderness and whimsy and playfulness is such a desirable thing in a partner. Like most people that I know that are interested in men find those particular traits to be very attractive. And I think men who are very manipulative know this and they try to emulate those things when in reality they are very self-centered and often very shitty in a lot of ways. Obviously we're we're generalizing here. But, you know, if you know if you've had the experience then you know what I mean. What if you're mystical and whimsical and just brew unforeseen concoctions in an undisclosed location? Then send me your location. There's a difference in how they talk about it. True, true. Men who plead versus men who barter. Yes. Very mostly attracted to men, but they're so icky at the same time. Also, like a lot of times and men are not the only people who who do this. Obviously, I think this is like a straight people thing is that sometimes like if you're straight, you will sort of co-opt queer coded things. And it, I'm not saying it's always done with malicious intent. Like, I'm not saying, like, if you like Phoebe Bridgers, you're queer baiting. You know what I'm saying? But I think that that can be a dimension of it as well, where it can be frustrating, where it's like, you're giving me all these signals that you're queer, but you're actually not. And that can just be disappointing. It's not even necessarily like, oh, that means you're a manipulative piece of shit. But it can just be disappointing. It's like, oh, like, I thought you were signaling something to me. But in reality, like, you just like those things. And, like, I'm not saying that's... You know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Mostly, oh, I read that already. Cishet man who talks on and on about it is more sus to me than someone who just likes the music. Straight women who call their friends girlfriends, right? I know, like I was with my girlfriend and I'm like, oh? Ooh, woo, soft boy who loves bi girls. Yeah, yeah. It's like, not unless you're bi, man. <laughs> Like, let's both be bi, okay? It's your pet peeve. It's because they're annoying. It's because they're annoying. <laughs> and it's just, it's like, it's, 
it's literally a minefield because softness and tenderness and playfulness and like all those things like give it to me now I want I want soft I want tender I want playful you know like I want all of those things but it's really it's it's hard to find that it's hard to find that it truly is but somehow through the magic of the internet I have managed to be in a situation where every time I click a silly little button on my computer the funniest so oh that was a moan <laughs> okay well you know what that sums it up pretty much those qualities that I seek they somehow congregate in my pewter and talk to me whenever I click a button on my computer so that's pretty cool all right this song this song's got a lot of moaning in it that's a lot of moaning the moan to non moan ratio. Was a little high. <laughs> Need a separation because if you're goofing and whimsical, but always ooh woo. OK, turn up the moaning. One in chat if I should have turned up the moaning. Going to blast a rope at this moan lo-fi. Um, you know what? High libido fi. <laughs> One thing that I will say that is really interesting. Um, hey, Nala, how's it going? There was just a lo fi song. I'm fighting for my life with finding a good lo fi channel. And I think, I think I'm just going to have to go with my tried and true on YouTube. There was a there was a um, a song that re that featured some moaning. Take a shot whenever I've changed the music station on stream today. Instantly dies of alcohol poisoning. Taking a break from schoolwork, nice. With the studying girl, you know what? I I like the raccoon one. I've been like or the red panda one. The chill hop one, that's the one I've been liking lately. But I think, Sourdough, what you said is really interesting because I, there needs to be a balance between like, basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't, I'm not interested in someone who is a persona. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone has so many different sides to them. And I personally don't get along with people who I can't access more than one note of their personality. Doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It's just difficult for me to get along with people who I can only sense one note of their personality. Like, I wanna see your serious side. I wanna see your contemplative side. I wanna see your goofy side. I wanna see your fucking silly ass, you know, idiot side. I want to see the side of you that's like, like, what do you, what are your interests and like, what types of art do you like to surround yourself with? And also send me memes about like butt chugging, <laughs> you know? <laughs> your wrists are hurting after five seconds of scrubbing because you've been cleaning more shit than before at work and, and all your notes and gaming. Dang feels impersonal or boring I would agree you can't have a conversation like we're about to lose the house to the bank with a constant ooh woo but you can if there's someone with that yeah of course that's exactly you're yeah you're hitting the nail on the head one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven two conversations on different platforms or in different chats. Now that is another story. <laughs> the conversation that I'm having with somebody on TikTok versus what we're talking about through, via voice memo, <laughs> often not, not the same tone. <laughs> 
The house is being repossessed. Plays Mitski. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, like... I feel like this has just been a topic of, of conversation recently. Like, it's not a new topic of conversation, but, you know, the, the quote-unquote cozy stream vibe where it's like the problem isn't your aesthetic. The problem isn't the fact that you like to play comforting games. The problem isn't that you have a comforting presence or that you're, you want your community to feel warm. None of those things are prob are problematic. None of those things in and of themselves are bad. Like I incorporate many of those aesthetics into my own personal online presence because I like many of those things. I like beautiful colors and I like cute little kittens sitting in a little field of flowers. Like I like that kind of shit, you know? And also and I think, um, I think maybe it was Tori who said this in your chat when we were talking about it the other day, Sourdough, but like saying no politics allowed is a political stance. Like when you're, when you're saying like, this is like an uwu space and we don't talk about politics or anything, like you are making a, you are taking a political stance. And there's a difference between wanting to create a warm and welcoming environment. Cause I want to do that. Like I would, I aspire to create a welcoming environment where people feel comfortable and people can relax after a long day or whatever. But also like, I'm not going to, um, like perfect example, the, the Pepe conversation we were having earlier, like I'm not going to compromise like my morals and beliefs in order to, because I'm afraid to like harsh the, the vibe. You know what I mean? Like we're having real conversations. I'm a real person and I'm not going to try to get back to neutral ground because frankly, like a lot of the things I talk about, if you disagree with me, then we're probably, this space is probably not for you anyways, at least politically, you know? So I'm going to like, I'm going to show my ass. And if you don't like it, well, there's the door. You know what I'm saying? Got to say it in writing or else your message is getting listened to a week later. <laughs> Delusion and despair. You know, that is coming back after a long trip and then having a huge project due. That is the mood, Emma. Tori is league smarter than you, so you you trust her judgment always. <laughs> Cozy streamers who let people be racist and go, ooh, ooh, no politics. Exactly. Don't trigger people. Say that again. Let's say that again. Don't trigger people is different than no politics. That is very. That is a very wise thing that you just said yes a lot of gamers don't want politics in their games but also cannot recognize politics yes yes no such thing as peace without neutrality please display entrance yeah exactly <laughs> this is not the space to vent is different than don't argue exactly he doesn't allow politics because he wants his stream to be an escape. However, he explicitly supports marginalized communities and that's why 90% of his viewers are LGBTs. Yes. Because also, that is another you know, viewpoint. Like I completely understand if if you're not like Hassan, you know, and you don't want to be talking politics like 24/7. And I mean, when I say politics, I guess I mean like I'm talking like, you know, Tucker Carlson, like, you know, whatever, that kind of bullshit. Um, then that's fine. You're allowed to set those boundaries, but there is a difference between setting boundaries about what you want the conversation to be like and like putting your foot down by having a stance about what you support and what you believe in. That's, that's where I say no. <laughs> Don't know how to manage those conversations. And yes, let me just say, this is not, this is not, um, I think Kit put it really well where it's more about like where 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 are you in in regards to taking a stand because a lot of times people will come in and they want to they're going to want to engage you in a serious conversation and they're not going to want to do it in good faith and oftentimes you know those types of con conversations can get out of control really quickly especially when you have a really large audience so there's nuance to be had there for for sure but it is it comes across as very out of touch, very out of touch Thursdays when you're when you're like no politics allowed. 
you know. This chat got me wise and pondering. I'm so thinking and being academic in this chat room right now. <laughs> Pensive AF. Speak out about current events. On the other hand, debate streams are like poison to the soul. Right. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, please debate Steven Universe with me, you know? But the this conversation that we're having right now is political. This is a political conversation. And I think we're having it in a way where it makes sense. It's the flow of the conversation. People aren't being antagonistic. This is this feels safe. I don't feel like I have to set a hard boundary to end this conversation right now. I'm enjoying this conversation. When you say you're gay and love being gay. Right, exactly. Exactly, Nala. Right, the guy who got mad at someone who said their mom died when they asked how they were. Yes, that was such bullshit. That was such bullshit. Poor man who heard sad thing. Yeah. I'm trying to get cozy. Politics. Do I watch ContraPoints? I used to, but I have not in a long time. I have not in a long time. I've kind of, I'm so behind. The I li Every night I listen to the H Bomber Guy Pathologic video essay and fall, and fall asleep. And I watch Trixie and Katya and that's it. <laughs> She cons on my vertilization. Just going to submit that for your dissertation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made it harder for you to reach out to people. Yeah, you know what? That that bothered me so much because as somebody who has had people come into my chat and genuinely trauma dump and that is really difficult to deal with by the way that puts that puts everybody in an uncomfortable position but i've had people come in to chat before and like say things that made me genuinely uncomfortable so i understand where the root of that was coming from but that was not the way to handle it that was not the way to handle it like, and you're, you're like the way that they ask, they're like, where the fuck have you been? You haven't been here. It's like, well, my mom died. Like, how else are you supposed to answer? And like, if I asked, if I asked somebody like a direct question, and it's not like they were like, well, my mom died and da, 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 da. And like, they're trying to like, you know, make somebody feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just did not handle it well. He like started yelling at that person. Like, Nuance, always, as always, nuance, 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 nuance. There is no one size fits all for every situation. And I think it's really important that sometimes the onus is on the streamer for how they can, like streamers can pick and choose, like how they want to respond to things or not respond to things. And that was not it. In my onion, in my honest onion, It's not re their responsibility to lie. Yeah, exactly. You can still handle it with compassion. There was no compassion how he handled it. Yep. Really good way of talking about it without losing momentum, which is telling me you feel bad and you're willing to talk in a more open way when it isn't so public. Exactly. You finished your burst. A lean on me, but not right now. Yes, 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 yes. Someone came in on the opposite side. It would suck. We might have to shut the convo down, but if everyone agrees... It's okay. Hmm. You know, if someone came in on the opposite side and it seemed clear that they were engaging in the conversation in good faith, and I'm the one that has to make that call, then I would welcome that. But if somebody comes in and, and there there's, there's so much to be said for about how you're delivering your message and you're and you're saying I'm trying to show I'm trying to show my perspective from the other side of things because I think see things in a different way and I feel like it's worthwhile to mention that and contribute this to the conversation instead of I'm going to shut down what you're say saying by disagreeing with you there's a big difference there if that makes sense and I think even you know um I think even you bringing up that position, Nala, is like a perfect example of that. Because I think what you're talking about is like that we can kind of get in echo chambers. 
There are, so have you ever heard of the tolerance paradox, Nala? Because I think partly what you're touching on has to do with the tolerance paradox. Because like, in order to be truly tolerant, there are certain things that you can't tolerate. And there's a difference between not tolerating bigotry and racism, etc. There's a difference between not tolerating that in the spaces that you're in and only wanting to surround yourself by with people who agree with you. Does that make sense? That's how I think about it anyways. I think there's a big difference. Me nodding and looking up the definition of nuance. <laughs> Have respect for people who say no politics. Everything that you said in that message, yes. They don't know how to handle it, want to keep their community safe. I, I completely hear all of that. And I, I agree with that also. You kind of love James and you're going to send him a package. I don't know. I don't know who James is, but I, I wish him well. <laughs> going to take burst pictures tomorrow because you have some finishing touches to do, but it's a chunky star shaped purse and you made an adjustable strap. That is so fucking cool. I can't wait to see it. Cry and cry a lot, but do it where you can hear an echo so you can hear yourself calm down on your own. Holy shit. That's. Wow. Yeah. This isn't the place to educate others. Please look, please look into it on your own. That, that is, that would be a very, um, that would be a very diplomatic way to handle that. Lactose intolerant, but instead of dairy and lactose, it's for intolerant people. Exactly. There is more to talking politics than debate. Very good point. Very, very, very good point. Being so big brain creative pilled for doing it mostly without a pattern. That's because you are. Sour dad moment. Debate is a narrow rhetorical tool. Say it again. Credit to this community that we can have a conversation like this and it feels safe. Well, I really appreciate you saying that. political talk when you're home and he tries to talk to you about your degree as if you're not studying politics. Yeah. How's that going for you? <laughs> Debate is kind of cringe. Am I the asshole? Some people's existence inherently feels political and they cannot escape that. That's also a very good point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A 10 pound starburst square that we could all take bites out of in silence. I think I would shit my pants. Other things where it's everyone asking and answering questions. Could heal the world. Those things will back you up. Or so I'm told, <laughs> or so I'm told. Somebody, somebody may have told me that once. I definitely don't know it from my own experience of eating Starburst on stream until three in the morning and then not being able to shit for two days. Who said that? It was a productive conversation in your class. That's awesome, Nala. Treating each other like people and acknowledging that you're a person were not just names on a Twitter account. Yes. I wish people in your classes were this reasonable and respectful of opinions. I wish that for you too. Just don't know the right words for this type of space because you like this. We can talk about things that hurt us without becoming more hurt. You know, I really do think it's, it's all about, it's all, I'm all about that nuance. That's scary, scarily similar to my friend's experience and not mine. Erm. Erm. had your unfortunate experience in a space where politics were allowed and encouraged until I gave an opposing experience, which by the way, is still eternally grateful for you to read for reaching out. Yeah, that was a, yeah. Yeah. That was an interesting time. <laughs> Thank you for that follow, by the way. Oog, did you all ever have debates in school where you would get assigned positions, but some debates were literally should gay people be allowed? I, uh, Thankfully, I never did, but that is, ooh, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Word of the day. 
What about butt chugging? Butt chugging Starburst? Saying no politics can be a position of privilege, but at the same time, people whose life is inherently political deserve spaces where they don't have to confront it all the time. That is, yeah, germ of Hild, basically. And, you know, I really appreciate people bringing up the that there are many benefits to being a marine biologist, that there are, there are many reasons why people might say no politics. And I appreciate that because I, to me, it's often when it's paired with certain other things and certain other environments, it's often a signal to me like, okay, this is actually not a genuinely safe space. But also, uh, people can people can get raided by hit save Cyril. What? Cyril? Thank you for the raid. I was gonna raid you. <laughs> How was your stream? How was Cuphead? Everyone, go follow Cyril DJ right now. Khaled. DJ Khaled is in the house. How was your stream? How is your stream? Cyril, you sick fuck. How is Cuphead? Hi, Max. Hi, Travis. Hi, Stars. Look at all these pals. Look at all these pals. Thank you so much for the raid. I love Cyril. If you are not following Cyril, you're literally banned. Literally, you're banned. We're having a we're having a little bit of a, a deep, a deep and sexy conversation right now about what it means to have a, a safe space, what it means when you say no politics in your stream, that kind of stuff. So that's what you've walked into. <laughs> okay, you know what, Nala? I think that is exactly the type of metaphor that I've been looking for to like bring everything together, um, which is that it's like the I don't see color type of statement. That is what no politics allowed often read reads as to me, but it doesn't always mean that because there are many reasons why people would not want to have those types of conversations in their spaces, for sure. No head until you follow Cyril, exactly. Shit save Cyril, uh more like my friend. <laughs> my friend Cyril. I'm so serial pilled and hit save core right now. Bridge. I guess she likes bridge. Sometimes you just want to be a human, actually. Valid. Mingus Reedus would smile upon me. Upon who? Hey, Celevi. Been lurking, but you want to say loving this conversation. Y'all are pretty cool people. Right back at you, Sarah. Some people, I'm one of those people that don't like to have political conversations in Twitch chats because I come to streams to relax and hang out. That is, that, you know, that's, that is extremely reasonable. Reasonable to the degree of extremity. Thank you everyone for for sharing your experience. Hit blimp Cyril. <laughs> Lurking to go take a mentally ill walk. <laughs> oh, thank you for the lurk, my pal. I love you so much. I hope you have a good walk. Come become like a Totoro. There's a fly in my soup. Sometimes you just got to take a mentally ill walk. Ain't that just the truth? I have to show Cyril my... Oh, wait, Cyril, are you still... Oh, they left. When Cyril comes back, don't worry. I'll be... Po you, you best believe I'm going to be posting this shit. Oh, Raiders. Raiders and pals. Look what... First of all, there was a kit reveal on my stream earlier. Second of all, look what they brought. Yeah, that's a germ of vampire blanket. That's a germ of vampire blanket that Kit brought to me. So, so there. How's the making and crafting? It's going really well. 
it's going really well. We've we've gotten this is we're working on the I believe it maybe it's the third second or third row of purple. I think it's just the second. And um, getting close to well, not that close. <laughs> Never mind. I thought we were getting close to the end of the blanket. Not quite time to turn it yet. <laughs> you take mentally ill walks in your head. I continue to rot in bed. <laughs> the egg on my leg is actively growing. Dr. Seuss could never. It heals me to see him there. They're germapilled, whimsy-coated plush blankets. Yeah. Deal with it. Deal with it. Norple. They're your new favorite color. They're my favorite color too. That's why it's my chat color. Why is this song so high energy? I'm turning down the joyous whimsy. Dr. Pussy. Mentally ill hikes, mentally ill mountain climbs, because I operate on a level you can barely perceive. What, Colorado? You wanna know something? I would like to get into hiking. I am just intimidated because I am not in the best shape, like cardio wise. Mentally ill poops every single day. And I'm, I get self-conscious because, no, it was very called for and you should, you should say it. Um, I just get self-conscious because I'm afraid people are judging me for like being out of breath and needing to take frequent stops. You know, you want to hike, go on a nice, easy stroll through nature. Exactly. I'll never forget you did this. Can't believe you've done this. Why does it have to be sweaty? Yeah, like just don't make me walk up a hill, you know? Hike solo, but that can be dangerous. Yes, <laughs> yes. When you have half your water left, that means you're halfway done. Turn around when you get halfway through your water. Interesting. You need the frequent stops to appreciate the beauty around you. That is so fucking true. Also, that's like a life motto that just made me legitimately emotional i have a tear in my eye you need the frequent stops to appreciate the beauty around you fuck you emma that was beautiful that was beautiful that made me that literally made me tear up a little bit carry the biggest sword i'll i'll do um i'll go on a hike with a ratatouille build you stop so much and walk on paved trails Stopping is the any stopping enjoyers in the chat? Need to see a tree or else I'm gonna die. <laughs> yes, we need to find trees. Bringing out a poetry book right now. Good. Maybe if you look up from iPhone from time to time, you might see something. <laughs> your cardio has jumped in the loo the past six months because you had a foot injury. I'm sorry about your foot. The yeah, stopping yourself from panting like a gremlin at the top of the stairs, exactly. Taco time. Make streamer cry challenge. Difficulty level, extremely easy. Did somebody say poetry? Revving my, rev up those fryers. Poetry. Remember when I used to have a poem redeem? Love to pause and sit on a bench. Me on the breaks between my bout of diarrhea because I refuse to accept my lactose intolerance. <laughs> Short hikes are so pog. Did somebody say appreciate the beauty between words and the eye? Rev's ridiculously loud engine that annoys the whole block. <laughs> Stopping during a hike to sit on a rock and eat a little snack. Trader Joe Ravioli. Mm -mm -mm. Genuinely taking in the views whilst out of breath hits different than when you're breathing normally. True. You never got yours. I'll write it for you. I'll do it. I'll do it. 
Need to be ready for bed so you can curl up in blankets. Love this chat. It makes you be like, no, I do deserve love. You do. It's true. You do. Heard monstering flesh. Wait, was that, was that Morrissey? Was that Morrissey's book? Because I feel like, weren't we reading from Morrissey's sex scene with people at one point in time? Stopping during a hike to plan out how much arson I'm going to do. Smokey the bear is shaking. Pretending to be a fairy in the forest. I do kind of like that. I do love to play pretend. Does anyone in chat love to play pretend? That's why I like D&D &D and stuff so much because I just want to like, what I really want to do in my heart of hearts is play pretend at recess again. Like, I just want to play pretend. You saw the most... Oh no, the dog! Oh no, not that, Akos. I want to play D&D so bad. I want to go to a Ren Fair. I want to, I want to strap myself into a slutty little corset and go have a pickle shoved down my throat at a Renaissance Fair. I've never been to one before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Coming to a Ren Fair, beautiful. Logging into my Lin Manuel Miranda lip bite account. I just want to play pretend. <laughs> I like to sing, dance, pretend, and kazoo. Is that from Kazoo Kid? I've never actually seen Kazoo Kid. Exposed. Play pretend all the time in your soup like brain. <laughs> Felt whimsical as fuck. Need to be a sexy elf at a Ren fair immediately. Immediately. Never been to a Ren fair when it's 20 minutes away from you? Come on now. Come on now. Get over there right now. Gonna go to bed. Have a good night if I don't chat when you come back. Sounds good, Nala. Thanks for being here. Thanks for chatting. Seriously. Great conversation. Awesome conversation. Poggers, epic, bacon, win. Take my freaking gold. Up, dude. Hides in a corner. Not getting a... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know every reference in the world. I'm sorry. The Ren Fair is a little overwhelming. Extremely reasonable. You're such a bad liar. You know what? That is one of the most exciting things about doing like improv-y role play, like TTRPG stuff is like the moment you realize that everyone wants the same thing and you lose that, like you shed your scales of self-consciousness and you're just able to be like a silly, goofy little person. It's the best feeling in the world. It makes me feel like a child. It really does. Last time you went to the Ren Fair, you were egg and went as an elf, and now you're so hobbit core you have to go as a genderless gremlin. <laughs> hide and seek last semester in your dorm building, and it fulfilled your childhood dream of switching clothes mid-round to hide in plain sight, and it healed all of your issues for a month. I love that. Ren Fair as Gandalf Big Naturals. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'll forgive you this time. I mean, they. <laughs> Slutty little pirate shirt. I love lying. I love to fib, fib and peddle falsehoods. You're just a little trickster. You're just a little trickster, aren't you? Genuinely don't know if I would be good at D&D roleplay because I'm so self-conscious. We got to make it happen. We got to actually make it happen. I'm going to put that on my vision board. I'm not even kidding. I'm putting it on my vision board. Love being a cute, silly little baby. Well, Emma, I would like to see it. It's fine if you're with friends that you trust. It's got to have at some point, yeah. Our first attempt was was certainly thoroughly foiled. Travis is a great DM. I don't, I don't doubt that. How's it going, Allie? How did your pie turn out, by the way? You were making a scrumptious, I believe it was a triple berry pie, no? The other night. 
GTA role play is really fun if you're in a mostly queer server. So, okay, can you can you give me like the TLDR, the Reader's Digest of what GTA role play, like can you kind of break it down a little bit for me, what it is? Board game arena, yes, board game arena night in the Discord when? As if I'm not the person that can make that happen. Let's do that. For the best, true. <laughs> true, rest in piss. Ah, D and D would be y'all are making me think things and have thoughts. <laughs> Watching shows and writing stories and playing characters, but you can't handle doing all three at once. So fair. You forced your DM to give your wizard a gun and convince an audience member's child to shoot their father, and then tried to fuck everyone in the town after that. Sounds like a typical Tuesday. You only played Pokemon D&D, &D, but you would love to DM Pokemon D&D. &D. That sounds so fun. I would board game arena if this was the Discord. That's true. It was for a bake sale, so here's hoping it turned out okay. Nice. Sam Killjoy, my friend Sam Killjoy is such a good DM. Sam Killjoy DM for me when? Love Letter is so fun. Has anyone in chat ever played Love Letter before? It's really, really fun. We need to have a game night. We need to have a game night. We're going to have a game night. We're going to have a game night, okay? Going to a board game pub with your friends on Friday for your birthday. <laughs> that sounds so fun. Activia DM. There's jobs set up so you can either just vibe, make money for stuff as your character, do crime. Mostly you're just running around the map with your pals while playing a character. Okay, that is really fun. Brendan Yuri as Dracula, just a thought. More like Germa as Jack Dracula. Jackula. Burn through the witches and slam through the ditches and cram in the back of my Jagula. Jackie is short for Jackula. We should play car lesbians. We sh we should play car lesbians. What is car what's car lesbian? <laughs> Allergic to eggs and most. Is your child almost a year old? I'm gonna poop my pants. I'm gonna poop my pants. Okay, girl, fuck game night. Rolls eyes. I mean, they. She germa on my Jackula. Who up watching Jackula on their Transylvania right now? <laughs> Who wanna play Carla? Never mind. Child Hall. <laughs> Girl, I'm so bored game. We should put deodorant on or something. <laughs> Tabletop game where you have stats for lesbian and car. Amazing. Tomorrow is your baby's birthday. Where did the where did all the time go? Dr. Dog were so right for asking that question. Carla Hotla. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Tomorrow is your birthday, your baby? Stars, happy early birthday. She's gonna gas me up? I can't wait. I can't wait to get gassed up by your grandma. Stars and baby share a birthday. She's gonna destroy a pie, amazing. Thought you were talking about the Germa blanket. <laughs> yeah, I made this. I made this. And Al Pacino as well. I share a birthday with Christopher Walken and Ewan McGregor, among others. No idea what to do for your birthday? Well, I will I will maybe give you a couple suggestions of what you shouldn't do. Uh, do not lick the pavement. Do not lick the sand. Do not get a concussion. I hope this helps. Perfect date, not too hot, not too cold. Just like from Miss Congeniality. Weaves you into my germa blanket. Among us. <laughs> that was what you were looking forward to? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Maybe a quiet night in, yeah. Maybe let's play Love Letter on your birthday. Dead freaking ass, Emma, 
if you want to have a birthday party in the discord where we play like silly little games and stuff we can do that but if you want to do things with human beings that you can see touch taste and 